to eliminate vibrations four main aspects need to be checked and, if necessary corrected. Motor shafts run out. Faceplate run out. Elimination of the imbalance of the abrasive disc. Correction of the radial geometry of the disc. Now for some theory. These are radial runouts. These are end face runouts. Let's deal with end face runouts first. Almost all home bench grinders are built the same way. The motor shaft has a diameter of 12.5 to 12.7 millimeters. On the shaft there is a protrusion for resting the faceplate. This protrusion is less than 1 millimeter. And almost all home bench grinders are supplied with such stamped washers with a thickness of 2.5 millimeters. Now answer for yourself. Is it possible to securely hold the abrasive disc strictly perpendicular to the axis? After all, this is what will determine the value of end-face runouts. That is, all hope for a thin stamped washer and an emphasis of less than 1 mm. Here is a break dance obtained with this technology. Thus thin stamped washers are constant and face runouts and vibrations of your bench grinder. If you think that by paying for an expensive brand, you will get at least a milled faceplate, then this is not at all the case. I bought an E-NTHBG-150. There are such milled faceplates. The depth of the faceplate hole is 12 millimeters. What should you do if you do not have E in hand have a thin stamped faceplate? There is only one way out, to order a faceplate turner. Abrasive discs for home bench grinders are available with a 12.7 millimeters hole to fit directly on the shaft. And there are second ones with a 32 mm hole and with a plastic ring inside. I recommend that you buy the second one with a 32 mm hole. And order such a faceplate from a turner. The material is preferably aluminium. The lip of the entire hole for the axle is about 27 mm. This part must fit snugly on the motor shaft without play. But if you don't have a turner, then I have good news for you. I am planning the next video on how to make such a part without turning and complex tools. The bushings on my e handle didn't hold well so I glued them in with epoxy. Then I leveled the side that goes to the faceplate. My faceplates had a little play, so I wound one layer of hard tape on the shaft and then put epoxy on top. And face runouts of both faceplates are no more than 0.1 mm. But you can level the faceplate with a Dremel and a diamond cylinder. And face runouts have been reduced to 0.05 mm. The side pressed against the faceplate is minimal in vibrations. But the disc has a radial runout. This is a new disc so its radial geometry has not been fixed yet. It is better to fix this before balancing the disc. After balancing you can align more accurately. It's easier than doing the balancing twice. Press the grinder onto the floor with one hand using your body weight. Otherwise, the grinder will dance. Okay. You've fixed the disc radius. But if you remove your hand the disc will still go. 
But why? Everything is simple. The disc has uneven density and we will fix it. You need a shaft or tube with a diameter of about 12 millimeters. Wind several layers of adhesive tape up to the diameter of the sleeve. Now you can put a balanced disc on the grinder and correct the geometry with a diamond more accurately. And I forgot to say that each disc is checked on the grinder separately. I do the test of the first disc. The grinder stands on the table without fastening and without rubber feet. You need thin cardboard under the washer, because the disc is fragile. Now for the final test after balancing the second disc. <laughs> 